publish or perish has never been so true as it is today. People are boosting their publication record and their citations by gaming the system hard Core. Like, we're beyond just little cabals publishing together. This is a full-fledged underground system of trying to manipulate your career by using all of the very uh, unethical and potentially illegal ways of boosting up the number of papers you publish as a scientist. And today we're going to go through the ones that have come across my radar recently, and I just cannot believe that this is where we've ended up as academics. Clearly it was going to get here, right? You give clever people a metric to game and they will game it. And on Twitter, I found authorship for sale. And these people aren't selling authorship, by the way, but they're just raising awareness. And I cannot believe how crazy blatant that this has got. This didn't exist in my day and age. And it's a very new um, account. You know, they're, they're from January this year. But look, you just need to click on here and it's just people saying, article um, for publication on sharing basis. It's indexed, you get to go on Scopus, and they just have the position available and you pay to get that position on the paper author list. You know, as an example, um, a 2.58 impact factor journal will go from 900 US dollars for first author all the way down to 800 for third, and I think that's probably three or 700 for um, US uh, or 700 for fifth author. So it's just crazy to me that like we're just well beyond doing it sneaky. It's out in the open and people are going to get caught. It just goes on and on and on. And you can see people looking for, you know, um, different p authors for papers. And here one and two's gone, but you can get three. Not worth it if you ask me. But yeah, here we are. Just scroll through this and have a look at all of the different options you've got for buying journals for your name to go on. And I understand why academics are doing this. It is so competitive out there that if you are not publishing with a really strong research group regularly and you've got a little bit of money, there's no doubt that this would have crossed a load of people's minds because, you know, it is their job, it is their livelihood, it is everything they've worked towards. And if you just, you know, can game the system by getting your name on a few papers by collaborating, then of course that would cross people's minds. But I cannot believe how blatant it has become. Highly cited researchers are working for multiple universities. What this means is that the university um, that wants to boost up their reputation can actually just pay other um, academics who are highly cited to list them as their affiliated kind of um, university in the paper that they're publishing. And what this does is raise the university, raise the profile of the researcher, but also the researcher gets paid a lot of money every year just to include them as an affiliation on the papers they publish. And so I found this guy, uh, Rafael Luque, who um, was at the University of Cordoba in Spain, and uh, he's also affiliated with King Saud University and the People's Friendship University of Russia in Moscow, despite holding full time publicly funded contract with a Spanish institution, and that's the University of um, Cordoba. And so uh, he is a prolific, like super prolific publisher. I cannot believe how crazy this is. He has published um, uh, 58 studies this year at a rate of one every 37 hours. Now think about that. What games is he playing? And ultimately, he could be, arguably, he could be paying for positions on papers. He could be um, just publishing rubbish. He may have a massive, massive research group and multiple collaborations, but really, how is a man like him, a normal everyday scientist, meant to look over and significantly contribute to papers every 37 hours? One thing that I love about this, uh, this thing is that he just says that without me, the University of 
Cordoba will drop 300 places in the Shanghai ranking. They have shot themselves in the foot. Now that's just incredible. To me, that just shows the arrogance of some academics to be like, I'm untouchable. The reason I'm here is because I raise not only my profile, but the whole university. And look, they've done the right thing by getting rid of him. But uh, they undoubtedly will suffer because they need to now play the game in a different way by maybe employing another highly cited uh, researcher. So it just is just like all interwoven and just incredibly uh, weird, if you ask me. Um, and so he does admit to using ChatGPT to polish his text. Now, polishing and copying and pasting from chat GPT is completely different. I really do think AI tools can help you streamline writing processes in academia by putting in papers, asking for it to, um, you know, change up some of the structures, the sentences, but it has to be your work. You can't just copy and paste from chat GPT because you'll end up with what they have said. And this is a paper that has come out um, in 2021 called Tortured Phrases. And so what this study has done is had a look at the dubious writing style emerging in science, which is just essentially taking the AI and uh, using it to generate uh, papers. And this paper, I think, is just so uh, sort of instrumental in highlighting how bad this has really got because they introduced this uh, this idea of looking for tortured phrases, which is easy for a human to pick up, but AI thinks that it's doing a great job. And so, uh, you know, they've got examples here as counterfeit consciousness instead of artificial intelligence. And that's where, you know, a researcher's put in something they want to copy and uh, the AI has spit it out and they've not looked at it and it's got through poor peer review. And another thing is that they, they found that there's dubious articles with a, a tortured writing style, citation of non-existent literature, which we know in my other video, go check it out here, ChatGPT is very good at producing what is something very sort of uh, convincingly an article, but goes nowhere. Um, and that's changed now a little bit with ChatGPT4, but this is a little bit of an older article, so it's on ChatGPT3. Um, and also unacknowledged image reuse. And uh, yeah, so here we can go through, if we go down, it's a long article and it's a really great in-depth kind of uh, expose on what's going on. But this one really interested me. It was uh, looking at really sort of uh, well-known journals and looking at the article abstracts and looking for um, the GPT detector score of over 70. And it's just incredible that of 104 articles, you know, you got 92% uh, detection score. And I just can't believe that these are some very, very well-known journals in here. And I've actually tried to publish in a couple of them, but they're not able to get away and around and or stop even people using AI to publish in their journals. And so tortured phrases not only gets around, I think, the plagiarism aspect, um, but also it just means that, you know, you end up with all of this rubbish science that's being sort of churned and churned and churned for the sake of just publishing. It's not added, adding anything new necessarily. And you can see here where you've got um, reusing without acknowledgement. So this is the uh, GPT detected uh, article and then this is the original figure and it's captioned. So you can see that here, this is the original one. It's only got a 3.53% uh, detection score, whereas this one is 88.22 uh, and it's got the same figure. It's just lazy without even sort of referencing or acknowledging where they got it from. I just think what this video is about is really the state of academic publishing and where we've ended up because of the incredible kind of pressure on scientists to produce because it all comes down to a flawed way of saying how successful we are as academics, which is the H index. The H index is how many papers you have with that many number of citations. So the more you publish, the more you cite, it's just gonna get uh, more and more competitive and you're gonna have 
people that are paying to be on papers. You're gonna have people that are spinning content using AI tools and creating these tortured phrases. You're gonna have people gaming the system because universities see them as so valuable that they're willing to pay the, the researchers, the highly cited and, and uh, publishing researchers to be part of their university. I don't have solutions for this, but I really feel like the first step is awareness and it's happening out in like the world. People are doing this because the pressure is so high and uh, it's happening on Telegram, it's happening on WhatsApp, it's happening on private groups and uh, it's just a very tough sort of situations we find ourselves in and the one way that we can stop it right away is by not putting so much weight on the H index. So there we have it. Let me know in the comments what would you would add. And also there are more ways to engage with me. The first way is to sign up for my newsletter. Head over to andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcast I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now. And also I've got academiainsider.com. That's my newish project where I've got my eBooks, the ultimate academic writing toolkit, the PhD survival guide. I've also got my new resource pack for a applying for a PhD and I've got the forum and a blog growing out there as well so I'll see you over there and I'll see you in the next video.